Hi students, let's study ICSC 10th standard chemistry chapter 4A, mole concept and stoichiometry. We'll start with numericals of the first type, question 1, Lussac's law. Let's start with question 4. 224 cm cube of ammonia undergoes catalytic oxidation in the presence of catalyst platinum to give nitric oxide and water vapor. The equation for this is mentioned in chapter 7B, ammonia. Calculate the volume of oxygen required for the reaction, all volumes measured at room temperature and pressure. So the first step is to write the chemical equation. We need to know the chemical equations from all the chapters of this textbook. So this is the reaction and it's a balanced equation. Writing conditions like the catalyst, temperature, pressure, reversibility sign is not important while solving numericals. Now as per Lussac's law, the reactants as well as the products, if they are in gaseous state, will bear a whole number ratio with each other. So based on the coefficients here, I can write that 4 volumes of ammonia will react with 5 volumes of oxygen to give 4 volumes of nitric oxide, also called nitrogen monoxide, and 6 volumes of steam. If this was liquid water, then we would not have talked about it at all because Lussac's law is applicable only for gases. Notice that all the coefficients are whole numbers, no decimals or fractions involved here. And for volume, we can use any unit, liter, centimeter cube, decimeter cube, milliliters, etc. Now, in the question, they mentioned that 224 centimeter cube of ammonia is being burned. And the question is, how much oxygen will be required? They have not asked anything about the products in this sum. So this is simply a unitary method, 4 into x is equal to 224 into 5 because if 4 volumes of ammonia gives requires 5 volumes of oxygen to burn quickly then 224 centimeter cube of ammonia will require x centimeter cube of oxygen which comes out to be 280 centimeter cube so that was the fourth sum now the fifth sum acetylene burns in air this reaction is in organic chemistry whenever any hydrocarbon burns with oxygen, there are only two products always, carbon dioxide and water vapor. That is given that there is sufficient oxygen. Calculate the volume of air required to completely burn 50 cm cube of acetylene. So first of all the reaction and make sure it's balanced. Again the water produced is in vapor form. According to Lussac's law, two volumes of acetylene, also called ethyne will require 5 volumes of oxygen and it will produce 4 volumes of carbon dioxide and 2 volumes of steam. But again in this question they have not asked us to find the volumes of the products formed. They just asked how much air is required to burn 50 cm cube of acetylene. So we'll assume it to be x. So again a unitary method and we get the answer as 125 cm cube of oxygen is required. But they have asked how much air will be required. If you are unable to supply pure oxygen and if you supply air well, that air has only 20% oxygen and the rest 80% is nitrogen. So in order to provide 125 centimeter cube of oxygen, how much air will be required? So again, we will use a unitary method. If air is 100%, out of that oxygen is 20%, which is given in the question. So to get 125 centimeter cube of oxygen, how much air will need to be supplied? I'll take the variable as y because x was already used in the sum. And the answer comes out to be 625 centimeter cube or cc, which is one and the same. Next, the seventh sum. Ammonia is formed from nitrogen and hydrogen. Well, that's the Haber's process. Assume all volumes are measured in liters and at STP. That's a standard, standard assumption for all the sums. It has no effect, effect on the sum being solved. Calculate the volume of ammonia formed if only 10% conversion has taken place. So they have not given any values in liters or centimeter cube. They've given just this 10% figure. That means our answer will also be in percent form. So first, we write the balanced equation. The actual reaction would have the catalyst and the promoter and the temperature and the pressure and the reversible sign, but in numericals, no need to mention all of that. So according to Lussac's law again, one volume will react with three volumes to give two volumes of ammonia. Well, I see a decrease in volume here. Interesting. 10% conversion takes place. Write 10% for one volume. Don't use hydrogen here because it's three volumes. If you want to use hydrogen's value, you'll have to write 10 into 3, 30%, then you'll get the same answer. So 10% conversion of nitrogen 
x percent conversion of ammonia. So again, cross multiply 1 into x is equal to 2 into 10. And we get the value of x as 20% volume. That's the ammonia formed. The reason why only 20% of the reactants get converted into ammonia is because it's a reversible reaction. So the original reactants also are available in the end. Now the eighth sum, 100 cc each of water gas and oxygen are ignited. Water gas, by the way, is carbon monoxide plus hydrogen. It's a mixture of two gases. And they are in the ratio 1, ratio 1. That means out of this 100 cc of water gas, 50 cc will be CO, carbon monoxide, and 50 cc will be hydrogen. And they are burned in 100 cc of oxygen. They mentioned that 100 cc of oxygen is also available. We don't know if that is sufficient or insufficient. We'll calculate that. And they've asked for the resultant mixture. So first of all, we'll see if any reactants were left over. Then we'll see if any, what are the products being formed in what volume. And that's how we'll find the resultant mixture in the end. Since water gas had two different components, we will have to write two equations here. Carbon monoxide reacting with oxygen and hydrogen also reacting with oxygen. Carbon monoxide will burn to give carbon dioxide and hydrogen will burn to give water vapor. Balance the equation, so Lusac's law, two volumes plus one volume gives two volumes and here also two volumes plus one volume gives two volumes. However, in the question they have mentioned that the gases were cooled to room temperature. Now at room temperature, the steam won't remain in gaseous form. It will condense to form water. That means I can no longer calculate the volume of liquid formed because Lusac's law is applicable only for gases. So take care of these words like cool to room temperature. So I see that only one product can be calculated carbon dioxide in the resultant mixture. And here I'm going to do it directly because by now you might have got the hang of it. If 50 cc of carbon monoxide is being burned, it will consume 25 cc of oxygen because clearly two volumes requires one volume of oxygen. Then 50 cc will require 25 cc. If you can't do it directly, then use variables like x, y and do cross multiplication like we did in the previous sums and then solve it. And two volumes of CO will give two volumes of CO2. That means 50 cc of CO will give 50 cc of CO2. Similarly here, if two volumes of hydrogen require one volume of oxygen to burn completely, so 50 cc of hydrogen will require 25 cc of oxygen to burn completely. So we have sufficient oxygen. That means the reactants CO and H2 will not be left at all. But oxygen will be left. Remember the total oxygen provided was 100 cc. But we see that 25 plus 25, only 50 cc is required for these reactions. So the oxygen used is just 50 cc. That means some oxygen, excess oxygen will be left over in the end. So oxygen left is 50 cc. And the carbon dioxide form was 50 cc. So what is the resultant mixture? Well, oxygen 50 cc, which was the excess reactant, and CO2 50 cc is the only product in gaseous form. So that's how we solve such sums. Next, you should also solve these nine solved examples of Lusac's law on page 72 and page 73 in the same method. Out of which, let me explain essay number one and nine because they are unique. So 450 centimeter cube of carbon monoxide and 200 centimeter cube of oxygen are mixed together and ignited. Calculate the composition of the resulting mixture. So step number one, the chemical reaction, it's balanced. Two volumes of CO will react with one volume of oxygen to give two volumes of CO2. That's a loose hacks law. Now CO was 450. So 450 centimeter cube of carbon monoxide will require how much oxygen? 225, half of it, centimeter cube of oxygen. But only 200 centimeter cube of oxygen has been provided to us. This means that all the carbon monoxide will not get burned. So we'll have to solve it in a different method. We'll assume x centimeter cube of carbon monoxide will be burned if we use 200 centimeter cube of oxygen, which is the upper limit as per the question. So if you cross multiply, you get the value of x as 400 centimeter cube. The way they have solved it has a, is a different format. You should solve it by my method. So only 400 out of this 450 will get burned. And how much carbon dioxide will be formed? We'll take it as Y, two volumes, so double of it, 400 centimeter cube of carbon dioxide is formed. So in the end, what is left? Any oxygen is left? No, entirely used up. Any carbon monoxide is left? Yes, 50 centimeter cube of carbon monoxide was left because there wasn't sufficient oxygen. And how much CO2 is produced? 400 centimeter cube. So the final answer, the resulting mixture, unused CO50 and CO2 formed 400.
total 450 that's the final answer similarly let's do the ninth sum now here there's a mixture of three gases co h2 and methane in different volumes and all of them are burnt in air so we'll write three equations balanced do them one below the other don't forget to mention Lusac's law carbon monoxide available is 10 centimeter cube so how much oxygen will it require well 2 ratio 1 so 10 will require 5 obviously and how much carbon dioxide will be produced 10 centimeter cube don't forget the units similarly if hydrogen is 60 centimeter cube it will require 30 centimeter cube of oxygen and it will produce 60 centimeter cube of steam but again it's mentioned cooling to room temperature so ignore water in calculations and third equation they said 25 cc of methane is available so that will require how much oxygen well it's one ratio two so double of it so 50 centimeter cube of oxygen will be required and how much carbon dioxide will be produced one ratio one so 25 centimeter cube again water ignore so what's the resultant mixture well i can see that there was sufficient oxygen so co h2 methane all of them will be used up nothing will remain Products formed, well, water should not be counted. So the only thing counted in the product side is carbon dioxide. 10 here, 25 here. So that's 35 centimeter cube. What about oxygen? Uh, is it in excess? Was it uh, all used up or was something left? How much oxygen was available initially, by the way? 750? No, that was air. And oxygen is just 20% of air. So actually, 150 centimeter cube of oxygen was available initially. And out of that, how much oxygen is used up? 5, 30, 50, that's 85 centimeter cube is used up. So how much oxygen is left in the end? 65 centimeter cube. What else? Well, the air had nitrogen as well, which never reacted with anything. 600 centimeter cube of air is nitrogen. So even that will be left in the end. So finally, the answer of the resultant mixture, oxygen left is 65, carbon dioxide produced is 35, and nitrogen left is 600. Also solve these eight board questions for homework in the same method. Hi students, this is AJ sir. If you like this video, press the like button. If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.